What's up everyone, Karu here from My Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. And welcome to the first video of a three-part series about returning. And boy, I'm excited about this one. I love returning. Returning, for me, it's so much fun. I love that cat and mouse game that is serving the return and have to play. Um, I've always enjoyed it and returning is definitely one of my biggest weapons. So I'm really excited to share my knowledge with you, some of, some of my mindset, some of the technical things that um, I believe are really important on returns. So I hope I can help you guys become better returners and actually enjoy more the return games. In this video, I'm going to talk about my approach to returning, my mindset during the return games, and how I'm able to outsmart the server in order to break serve more often. On part two and three, I'll be focusing more on the technical side of returning. Um, video two will be about returning first serves, and video number three about returning second serves, so a little bit of the technique, the things that I think are important, and obviously tactical, where to place the ball, what to do in those situations. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out the next two videos. Um, so you finish this three-part series, a much better returner. So as usual, let's first go to the court and then we'll meet back here for my final thoughts. And as you guys can see, I'm really excited about this topic. I've been meaning to do this for a long time. Um, so I, I, I will talk a lot. I'm on the court, I will be talking a lot, but it's very valuable information, so make sure you don't skip anything. Everything will kind of bring the subject together uh, in a very important way at the end. So um, I'll have my conclusions after the on-court part and let's go to the court. All right, guys, so we're here on the court. And like I said earlier, we're going to talk about more about the mindset of being a returner. I think a lot of people just don't really understand what it is that you have to do to play the return games a little bit better. As a returner, if you don't look for any cues, if you don't look for any edges and you're just reacting, if I'm just sitting there and reacting and hopefully the serve comes to me, that's where most people start struggling with returning because again, it's too, too much of a reaction and you're not proactively trying to maybe outsmart your, your, your opponent as he's about to serve. So right as the match starts, I'm looking for cues, things that might help me read the serve better. It could be in their motion, it can be with their toss, it can be just in general patterns, right? Like, so those first few games, I'm gonna, I'm going to be actively looking, even if I'm not going to win those games, I'm going to be actively looking for maybe their favorite serves, right? Where they're going to go when they're a little bit under pressure. All those like little things that might give me somewhat of, of an edge and then at one point maybe I'll make a, the right read and have a good return, make a good return in. So being proactive about this, being proactive about looking for what the server might be giving you because otherwise if they're hitting the spot and you don't have any clue of where they're serving you're you're not going to be able to return so now what are some of those cues i think there's motion so you can look at the motion um and i'll go more in depth into this in later videos but you can look into the motion uh are they able to actually hit a good flat serve or they they're more they're going to hit more slice serves that day. Like if they're playing more with a slice, maybe you don't have to worry too much about maybe the T serve on the on the do side and the Y serve on that side. So again, you can look for the, at, at their motion and kind of pay attention to what they can can and cannot do with the serve. Same on the second serve, are they more of a kick servers, maybe slice servers? There's all these cues that you can look for um, on the motion and also on the toss, right? Maybe if they toss a little bit more to the right, are they gonna slice, are they gonna, are they gonna go T? All those little things that the moment, you know, they sort of bring the racket up here um, that you are going to be looking for. You're gonna be looking at their body, maybe they're overturned a little bit when they do that, they go wide. Whatever it is, like there's, there's a lot of things that you can look for. Again, I can make a more in-depth video on this, but um, the point is, you are looking for it, right? Like you're playing the cat and mouse game as he's trying to outsmart you, you're trying to smart, outsmart them. And then the last thing I wanna do is look for um, what kind of serve they are. So are they just a big server? Are they more of a spot server? Do they wanna just start the point? Maybe just they just wanna open up the court, start the point. Maybe use, they have better ground strokes, so that's what they're, they're going for. Um, so I, I'm looking for what kind of server they are. Maybe the, the guy who's hitting sometimes really big serves, but he's not really a, a, a spot server. He's not hitting the spots. They're typically not as difficult to, to return um, as a spot server. 
So you just got to be looking for for what kind of server they are early on. So use those first two, three games um, returning to make sure um, you learn who they are as a server, hopefully a little bit, something. It doesn't have to, you don't have to master the person, but you have to know a little bit about who, what they want to do with the serve so you have a little bit of an edge when you go return. All right, now we, that we talked about all that mindset, we're going to have my friend Nick here just serve me a bunch of serves, okay? And as I do it, I'm going to kind of go through my thought process and some of the things that I want you to be looking for, doing with the returns that's going to make playing the return games a little easier, okay? So uh, Nick's just going to serve. I have no idea where he's going to go, okay? And I'm just going to try to figure it out. So first, good wide stance here. Stay nice and low. I'm gonna look for it, tossed it up. Ooh, that might have been an ace. I didn't see that one coming. That was good, that was good. Okay, so here on that serve, even though it was a, a fairly good serve, um, he didn't hit the spot. It was right at, at my strike zone, right? So I was able to just hit it through the middle. The point's gonna be neutral. I think that's something that is key here, is that when you're returning, when you're returning, the idea is, they have the advantage, right? Like Nick here has the advantage on the returns, on the serve. All I'm trying to do is try to neutralize, get to a neutral position on the point. If I can do that on the first shot, that would be amazing. <clears throat> there you go, that would have been fairly neutral. He can still attack me, but that would be fairly neutral. So pay attention here, I'm looking for any cues. Obviously you guys, I don't know if you guys can see him all the way on that side, but I'm gonna be looking for where the toss is going right for the toss is going maybe a little bit more to the right i think it's going to go wide there you go so i called it but i missed it you know what i mean so i'm going to be looking for for those cues sometimes maybe it's like a body rotation or the way the racket is coming around i think it's t there you go i looked for it. the way he was bringing the racket up it kind of gave me that he was going to go t again but you see i have to be proactively you see how i'm nice that was a good sir so as you saw, I, I kind of guessed a couple couple serves there. Now, what I don't want to see when I'm returning, what I don't want to see is staying stuck. So, right, like I'm going to get here and I'm going to split step and just kind of be st stuck. I think a lot of people, they end up being stuck on their returns because they don't have no idea what I'm doing. You watch Novak Djokovic, the good returners, you see as the guy tosses the ball up, as the guy tosses the ball up, they're going to try to cover a spot. See, I didn't cover the right spot there, right? I thought he was gonna go T, he went wide. But you see, I'm moving, I'm moving. I'm not just staying here in the stationary position where I started and I'm gonna finish there. I'm actually trying to slowly go into a side because I wanna cover, hopefully, there are three serves he can serve, right? He can serve body, he can serve T, he can serve wide, right? It's gonna be kind of impossible for me to cover all three. So it's very difficult to cover all three, but I can cover hopefully two of them really well. Like, right, so if I think he's going T, I'm gonna go a little bit more this way, so go T for me. Like, let's pretend he's, I don't know, but I'm going to cover a little bit more here, more to the T, and then if he had gone body, I would have been able to hit that one too, right? If I had gone wide, it might have been a tougher, tougher serve. But if I can cover two out of three, I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm gonna try to cover, it went wide, didn't hit the spot. I can hit a great return there, you see? So the technical part of returning, I'll be covering on part two uh, and three about first serve and second serve, so make sure you subscribe to the channel for that. So I wanna go back into kind of the tactical part and the mental aspect of being here and returning. Now, like I said earlier, it's pressureless, right? Like they have to hold serve, I don't have to hold serve uh, uh, in this moment. I don't really have to win the points. It's, the, it's their turn to win the points. So my, my goal here is to, one, actually don't be so hard on yourself. If you're losing some points on the return, it's okay. It's, again, it's their, their time to win those points. But, but don't be stubborn and get stuck doing the same thing over and over. This is a really, really important uh, part of this video that I want you to remember is that, okay, if I'm playing some return games, right, and I haven't won a point in, in two games, I have to do something else. I have to try something else. I have to, okay, it's like, let's say he's, he's serving here to me and I'm, I started a little bit closer to the baseline. All right, this is where I'm, I, I'm comfortable returning. And all of a sudden he's just nuking it. 
and I can return because I'm too close to the baseline. I'm making myself a bit, uh, a bit too jammed. Okay, if I haven't won a point doing that for maybe a couple games, then make an adjustment, right? Maybe like these days, like how far back I pro returning, right? So maybe the next, maybe the next game or point or whatever, I will be a little bit further back, give him a different look, and boom, see, like I started the point perfectly there, right? So I want to be able to confuse them a little bit. So by giving them different looks, going back, going forward, um, it's going to help me actually put some doubts in their head. Okay, so I want you to make sure you, you don't, you're not stubborn, you're not just losing points over and over without making an adjustment. Don't wait for, for an entire set. Back up a little bit, boom. If that's the best way for you to return that date, that's the best way for you to return. So again, don't be too stubborn about this. Keep making adjustments, keep, keep creating doubt in their heads. And all goes back to what I said earlier, the cat and mouse game. You have to be able to create a little bit of doubt because good service, I remember someone told me, I don't remember who told me, but good returners make the server serve where they want to return. So that's the, that's the key thing, making your opponent that with that mental game sort of like, oh, I think he's going to cover the T, so I'm going to go wide, but he probably knows that, so I'm actually going to go T, and I'm a step ahead. I'm like, yeah, he's going to go T. I know that. So I'm making him serve where I want it, and that's the best uh, that stuck to me with me for for many years since I was a teenager. I was like that is made that makes sense. You want to try to make them serve where you want to return, okay? And again, tactically, make sure you just try to stay neutral. Nothing, don't go crazy. Big targets hope through the middle is the best shot usually, and you're gonna be okay. So now let's go back to my apartment. Let's uh, do a conclusion there. I'll talk a little bit more about some some of the this cat and mouse game. All right, we're back here. As you saw, I talked a lot during that. Uh, so for this conclusion, I just wanna emphasize four things that are, I, I, I need you to remember from this video that I want you to have it in your head every time you're trying to return. The first one is to be proactive. Don't just react to the server. You gotta be proactive so you can make more returns on court. Number two is make adjustments. I said it earlier, don't be stubborn and stick to a a plan, a return plan that is not working. If you have to go closer to the baseline, get closer to the baseline, if you have to back up, back up, find a way that you can make more, more returns and then eventually win more points. So don't be stubborn and stick to the same game plan. Number three is play that cat and mouse game that I've been mentioning. You have to try to get under uh, your opponent's skin, get in his head, make him doubt the placement of his serve. Should I go T, but I think he's gonna be reading the T. You gotta play that game, even if you're wrong, you're, at least the server is not just going to step on the line and be like, I can just hit there. He's not going to be there. So play that game all the time. Try to get in your opponent's head. Make him miss more first serves, more second serves, and have to adjust his own game. And number fourth is be there. You don't have to hit perfect returns. Good returners make a lot of returns. They don't hit a lot of return winners. I'd much rather, as a server, play a guy who hits a return winner a game because he's going for everything, but misses, like, I don't know, one out of four, I love those odds, you know, but if I'm playing someone who's actually making a lot of returns, is keeping the, the, the points neutral from, from the start, that's a much, much harder guy, returner to play against. So big targets, go for, for safer shots at first. Obviously, as you, you get better, you can start, you know, going for a little bit more, but the more returns you make, the more your opponent is going to feel the pressure and the more he will end up like making mistakes off the first ball or actually making first serve mistakes or double faulting. It, it, with time, it, it becomes really taxing. So make sure you're putting a lot of returns in and you're not going for anything stupid early on. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Also shout out to everyone that recognized me at Indian Wells this past weekend. That was, that was kind of funny. It's, I'm still getting used to that, but uh, appreciate the support. Um, Make sure you subscribe to the channel and so you don't miss part two and three where I'm really going to dive a little bit, uh, dive deeper on first serve returns and second serve returns. So technical, tactical, all the things that I um, follow, my rules for returning. So make sure you subscribe to that. Also visit my tennisissue.com. Subscribe to our, news, uh, our newsletter. We have like a really cool newsletter um, that our new, our new um, 
team member team member is uh, working on. So make sure you subscribe to that. I'll leave a link down below, and I'll see you guys on the next one.